Well, good morning, everyone. We're glad you're here. We're glad we all survived another week. Whether you're here or online, we welcome you and our guests today. Had some people ask me about Bible school. Well, I'm going to talk a lot about Bible school. So you get a feel for what happens when we do an outreach like Bible school. As I share about Bible school, there are also pictures that will scroll so you can visually see some of the things that happened this week. It would take a lot of time to share what happened in each area, so I posted pictures every night after Bible school on our church Facebook page. So if you're on Facebook, you need to make sure that you're on the new Hope Christian Church Facebook page so that you can see what actually goes on. If you were involved in Bible school, it was an amazing week. Bible school is the biggest outreach that we do at New Hope, mainly because it takes so many people giving and working together. It's a real sacrifice for those who they work all day and then they come every night and they work with the kids. It takes many volunteers just to run the program each night. You know how many cookie bakers that it took and we had plenty of cookies and we had cookies left over for the community meal. It takes set up and take down people to put up chairs and equipment. Everything is placed inside buildings till the next evening. It takes people to cook and serve the meal on the last evening. It takes face painting volunteers. Someone sponsored the bounce house. Someone collects the online registration. Someone ordered the banners. Someone did all the flyers and the door knockers. There was a group who walked door to door. A van driver to pick up kids. Tents were donated and put up by non-members of New Hope. Someone made all the name badges and there were people who transported items for us. So that's I hope I didn't miss uh, a category, but that covers a lot of them, if I did. We probably had the hottest, stormiest week of summer, and God was faithful that we could function every night. We had a shower on the last night, but it only lasted 10 to 15 minutes, and we were able to resume. Tuesday night was amazing, as there was a big storm that came through in the afternoon. Some people got scared about the storm, but the storm was out by Bible school time, and we had temperatures in the 70s, which those of us that were there thought were just wonderful. So we do thank you to each and every one of you who contributed in any way. The kids really do love Bible school. We had kids that registered online. Online registration is very popular and is convenient for the parents and great for registration workers. We had lots of kids who came from Wayne and as far away as Finley, Ohio. We had at least 50 different kids that came to Bible school. Parents are always looking for activities for their kids and being in the park is a great atmosphere and it's also very non-threatening. So weather is our biggest challenge. So that kind of gives you an idea of how Bible school went. It was, it was just a real success. We reached kids. I think we'll be able to get more kids to come on Wednesday night, so we're looking forward to that. Remember, there's no time changes until the first Sunday in September. Everything stays the same till September 5th, and then Sunday school is at 9.30 and church is at 10.30. You know, one of the things that sometimes at meals, when uh, you sit down to a meal and food's passed around, one of the next things somebody says is, hey, would you please, please pass the salt? And I want to think about that today, about passing the salt. What does that mean? What does that mean to us as Christians? I want to start with uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse. Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You know, that verse is it's very strong and emphatic when it says, You are the salt of the earth. That's what Jesus, he says what he expects from us. We are the salt of the earth. We're it. We're the salt. We know salt gives flavor to food. It enhances taste. Um, helps in preservation of food. And I believe in the same way, when it says we are the salt of the earth, that we need to realize that we're the ones that are going to change things. We're the ones that are meant to improve things. That's God's plan. He says, you're it. You, know, you think about it. Who else is going to do it? Who else is going to do it? We're it, his people. We're the salt of the earth. 
We're to improve situations. We're to improve wherever we're at, whether that's in our families, in our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplace. We're the salt of the earth. One of the things that I believe in, in Bible school and, and a church being part of a community, I believe we have a responsibility to be the salt. We're to be the salt. We're to make a difference. We're, to, we're the ones that are make, make a difference. And that's the way God sees us. He sees us that way. And I think we need to see ourselves the way God sees us, that we're it. We're the salt. How do we do that? Well, we do it by godly living. We do it by obedience to God's word. Do what his word says. You know, it's by being an example. Loving our neighbors as ourself. You know, loving, loving people. That means if we're going to love people, we've got to get to know them. You know, one of the things, one of the things that I, I noticed about Bible school, and I don't know, it seemed a little different to me this year, but people were very open to conversation, to uh, talking, you know, and, and just uh, sharing with them. It seemed to me like there was a there was a, there was an openness there that I hadn't always seen. Uh, I talked to another uh, gentleman this week, and he said his pastor had shared with his church that that he sees an openness that people are open, people are open. But unless we're the salt, it's not going to make a difference. We have to be willing to get to know our neighbors. You know that means make an effort, get to know them. Maybe help them. You know, maybe there's something you can see a need. You might see that your neighbor has a need of some kind. Maybe you could offer help. Maybe we could just encourage. Sometimes, you know, people just need to be encouraged. Sometimes just be friendly. You know, sometimes it just starts real simple. Just by being friendly. But if we're going to be salt, we have to make effort. We have to make effort. We have to be witnesses. We have to be willing to share our faith. You don't have to be theological. You just need to share your faith. Share your faith. This is what I believe. Doesn't have to always be a, a theological writ on uh, something you come up with. But it's just, this is what I believe. This is why I trust God. And then I believe as Christians, we need to be consistent. You know, a lot of times the world watches us. Not a lot of times, but I think more than you realize, the world watches us. One of the things the world wants to see is we're consistent. That, you know, we live what we say. Doesn't mean we may, don't make mistakes. But basically, we try to live what we say. We're the salt. We're different. We're different. There's something different. I believe as Christians we need to be doers. You know, Jesus said it's, it's simple things. He says, you know, if you give a cup of water in my name, you know, a cup of water. I mean, that's, it's not asking for a lot from us. You know, sometimes it's just thinking about somebody else. Thinking about what somebody else could use or need or how I might help them or a cup of water in Jesus' name. Or just God bless you. you know, but we need to be consistent. We need to be involved. We need to be involved. We need to be involved in the world. You know, now, one of the things about being involved in the world is we have to be very careful. We, we're involved with the world, but we're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And I believe sometimes that's a, a point where Christians need to be really careful. You know, being in the world doesn't mean we participate in what the world does. Being friendly doesn't mean I do what the world does. I can be friendly, but I still obey God. And I still obey His Word. So as Christians, we're salt. We're different. We're different. But we're willing to be different as God calls us to be obedient to Him. Throughout the Old Testament, there was a lot of times when God's people had a lot of problems. And one of their biggest problems was when they were influenced by the world and not salt. 
They were supposed to be the influencers in the world. But many times, they allowed the world to influence them. I want to take a look at one of those times. In 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, the 7th verse, starting at the 7th verse. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt, under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and they feared other gods. So now they're supposed to fear God, but now they fear other gods. And they had walked in the statutes of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel and of the king of Israel, which they had made. And also the children of Israel secretly did against the Lord their God things that were not right. They built up for themselves high places in all their cities from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves sacred pillars and wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. They burned incense on all the high places like the nations whom the Lord had carried way before them. And they did wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this thing. So they're to be the salt, but what did they do? They turned around and they let the nations influence them. And they picked up their habits. They worshiped their gods. And I'm sure they still worship God. You know, in their inner minds, they're still trying to play both sides. They're worshiping God, but then they're going to appease the people around them. And they're not going to take a stand, so they worship their gods. And so they're not only in the world, but now they're of the world. They've taken on the habits of the world. They've taken on what God told them not to do. And I believe that's very difficult sometimes for Christians. It shouldn't be. We should have standards, and we should be willing to take our stand. We should be willing to be in the world, but not of the world. We don't participate in what the world does. We're different. We're salt. We're the salt of the earth. We're not like the world. We love the world. We love people in the world. And we help them and do what we can, but we're not partaking in what they do. We don't participate. And that's where I think we have to be very careful. And I think the downfall happens over a period of time. It's slow. You know, things creep in and we start to say, well, that's okay and that's okay. And first thing you know, we're participating in what the world does. And I believe it's, it's a very dangerous time because we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. In John, the 17th chapter, the 15th verse, Jesus has this prayer and he says, he says, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also send them into the world. So see, we're to be in the world, but not of the world. We're to go out in the world. I don't think we're supposed to as Christians, you know, sometimes Christians tend to try to isolate themselves because they don't want to be like the world, so let's do it by, we'll just make our own community, and we'll all stay there and keep ourselves pure so that we're not tainted by the world. That's not what God desires. He wants us to go into the world and be the salt. He wants us to be the changers. He wants us to be the changers. God's plan is for you and me to change the world. We're to be the salt of the earth. And if you think about it, who else is going to do it? Who else is going to do it? We're, we're, we're it. We're it. We're the salt of the earth. The world is going to try to do it in worldly ways. The world is going to try to fix things on their own. I think well-intentioned. I don't, I don't think a lot of times they've got evil intent. I think a lot of times they just don't know any different. They're just going to try to do it in their own strength. In their own strength. This morning in Sunday school, we were talking about God wants to bless the nations. And it's said in the, in the verses, in the Psalms, it says, you know, don't trust in your armies. Don't trust in your strength. Don't trust in your wealth. Don't trust in the Lord. And when you trust him, he will bless you. And that's one of the, probably one of the greatest dangers I see in America. We trust ourselves. We trust our military might. 
We trust our, our riches. We trust all the things that God has blessed us with. And we've started to put our trust in that. And we need to trust Him. We need to trust Him. We need to get back to trust the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. We trust Him. So that we can go out into the world and we can be different. I also shared this morning, and, and I just can't help but, you know, um, Haiti originally, when they started their country, they asked, they, they uh, dedicated the country to the devil. And in around 2000, I'm not sure, I haven't checked the date, but around 2000, they, they uh, renewed that pact with the devil. And if you look at Haiti, it's one disaster after another. It's one disaster after another. It's like those poor people. Well, yeah, those poor people, and I think we need to help them, but you know what? You make a pact with the devil, and guess what you're going to get? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And you know, to me as a Christian, those things are real. They're, it's like right there, I can see it. You know, I can see it. Now, nobody wants to say that. You're not going to hear anybody stand up and say, well, you know the reason Haiti's having all this trouble because they made that pact with the devil. Well, I just think that's what happened. I think God's word is true. I think it's true. So we have to be very careful that we go into the world, but we're not taken in by the influences of the world. That we don't start to compromise. I think, you know, sending our young people out into the world, you know, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's to schools, our young people are going into the world. What they're telling us is that 75% of young people going into colleges will walk away from their faith. They're not being the salt. We need to send our young people into the world as the salt of the earth. They're the ones going to make a difference. That's our hope. That's our hope. Our hope is our young people being salt. That they're going to go and they're going to be the influencers. It's not the world's going to influence them and suck them in. But our young people can be influencers. They can be the salt of the earth. Whether I don't care if it's in the workplace, whether they, where it is, whether they go to school, they, wherever it is. That they're the salt of the earth. They're the ones that change things. Not that the world changes them. We need, to, we need to have some strength, some conviction. This is what I believe, and this is true. This is what I know. How do we remain salt? You know, if we're the salt of the earth, how do we stay salty? I believe we continue in God's word. I don't think we can stay salty if we just try to do it on our own. I don't think we can say, well, you know, years ago I was pretty salty. You know? You know, I, I you know, a long time ago I did good. I believe we have to continue. The Bible says, if you continue in my word, then you're going to be my disciples. If you continue, you have to continue. I believe we have to stay in fellowship. I believe we have to stay in fellowship. Fellowship encourages us. There's a lot of things going on today. I don't know if you've noticed. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of things to deal with. A lot of, you know, the list is huge. Just stuff. We need encouraged. We need encouraged. We need to be held accountable. You know, we need to help be held accountable. We need to be in fellowship. You know, what are you doing? How are you going? How's this? How's that? How you, how's your, whatever's going on. We need to be held accountable. And I believe we have to have a desire to be salt. I think there should be something inside of us that wants to change things. Something inside of us needs to almost drive us that we want to be different. We want to change things. I don't want things to be the same where I am at. You know? I want to change things. 
One time somebody said, well, you know, I don't know if our children ought to, ought to go to church and on Wednesday night and all because, you know, it's kind of just a lot of brainwashing. Absolutely. I make no, I make no apology for brainwashing children. The Bible says they need their minds renewed. The Bible says, you and I, it says renew your mind according to the Word of God. We need to get our minds renewed according to the Word of God. Now, when you say brainwashing, there's a lot of evil connotation there. But I'm saying, yes, you better get your brain washed. You better get it washed with the Word of God. You better get it washed with truth. So from that standpoint, yes, I don't, I don't apologize for brainwashing children from that standpoint according to the Word of God. You know? That's what we do. You know, we do things on purpose. You know, we don't have Bible school just to do it. It's a purpose. Our purpose is to reach and touch children and their parents with the Word of God. I mean, it's a, that's what we're out there to do. Now, we do it in a loving way, and hopefully they have fun. You know, it's okay. They can have fun. It's okay to have fun learning the Word of God. It's okay to do certain things. But you got to be like, you know what? We're the salt. What are we going to do? What's God want us to do? What are ways that we can change things around us? If we don't do anything, we're not the salt. And what happened? Jesus says, well, if salt loses its saltiness, it's not good for anything. So it's not just important to stay salt, but the other side is if we lose our saltiness, we're worthless. We're worthless. If church becomes an organization, if church becomes a club, if church just becomes, I like going there because the people are nice, it's worthless. We're meant to be salt. We're meant to be salt. Not in here. We're to be salt out there. We're to be salt as we leave and go to work or go to school or wherever we go in our community. We're to be salt. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? Jesus said, well, you just throw it out and put it on the rest of the road and let people walk on it. It makes good filler. Wow. Wow. What a, what, a, what a thought. Worthless. Worthless. So we're to, be, we're to be the salt. We can't be afraid. Sometimes we're afraid to be salt. You know, I think we have to know what our convictions are. We have to know what we believe. We have to stand on what we believe. We have convictions. We're not afraid. Not afraid of what people think. You know? Can't be afraid. How are you going to be salt if you're afraid? I, I'm, I don't know what to say. You know, Jesus says, well, when you get there, I'll tell you what to say. So we have to trust him. We have to trust him. Okay, Lord, you'll show me what to say. You'll show me what to do. We have to look for opportunities. Look, be, be alert. Look for opportunities to be salt. I think they're in front of us. I think they're in front of us. You know, sometimes I, I can get to a point where I'm sad about where our nation is and I'm sad about things that go on. And, you know, and I feel bad and I can get real down and I can think, oh my, what are we going to do? It's doomsday. <laughs> if we're the salt, why would we even think that? How can it be so bad that we can't be salt? How can it be so bad that we can't make a difference? At what point do you say, let's just throw in the towel, doesn't work anyway? You are the salt of the earth. So we have to look for opportunities. We have to be aware of opportunities. I was surprised, I will admit, I was surprised at the reception of people to Bible school. I don't know, I probably shouldn't have been, but I honestly was surprised. Pleasantly surprised. You know, this is good. 
this is good. If we get to the point where we say, well, it doesn't matter, it doesn't do any good, what can we do? You won't be the salt. We have to look and see, what can we do? Can we just sit here and lament with one another how bad things are? Oh, the world's terrible. It's awful. Nobody's this. Nobody's that. We moan and carry on about where we are. And in the meantime, we're not the salt. We're worthless. We're worthless. We've got to see opportunities. We've got to see how can we reach others. How can we make a difference? I, I shared with some of the folks in Wayne, I said, you know, our desire is to build a building here. You know, we're heading that direction. That's our plan. You know, just exactly how that all unfolds is, you know, I have desires and I have hopes and, you know, I, I hope by next spring we might be building. But, you know, it's not just about a building. If we build a building and aren't the salt, we're worthless. If we build a building and don't make a difference where we're at, we're worthless. God isn't pleased. God will not be pleased because we build a building. Anybody can build a building almost. Almost. You know. If you've got enough money, anybody can build a building. You know. It's, it's not the issue. The issue is when we get there, are we going to be the salt? Otherwise, we'll just be a group, a club. We won't make a difference. Those are choices. Those are choices. So when we get there, we got to then say, okay, now, here we are. How are we going to be the salt? How are we going to make a difference? How are we going to make a difference? Are we going to make a difference? Are we going to make a difference? Is it going to matter? Is it going to matter? I think it should. Jesus sees us as the salt of the earth. He sees it. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You're it. You're the one that's going to change the taste of things. And you can say, well, I'm to this. I'm to that. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too busy. I'm too whatever. You're supposed to be the salt. You're supposed to be the salt. His intention is for us to be the salt of the earth. And so it's up to us to look for opportunities to say, okay, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see. Help me to think about I'm the salt of the earth and how am I going to be salt? How am I going to change things? A lot of times it's in simple ways. It's in simple little things. Sometimes as a group, we can do bigger things. And I say bigger, I'm not sure bigger is bigger. I want to tell you something. People come to the kingdom of God one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. So, you know, bigger, and sometimes we get numbers involved, and it's, it's not about that. It's one at a time. One at a time. We need to make a difference. We need to make a difference in people's lives. When people come in contact with us, they should say, you know, there's something different about them. They ought to see something different. Now, they're not going to say, boy, they were sure salty. <laughs> they're not going to say that. But they should say things like, you know, they're different. You know, they, they care. You know, there's just something about them. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. There's just something about them. There should be. Because we are the salt of the earth. It's my prayer. It's my prayer that as individuals that we're the salt of the earth wherever we're at. And I just want to say, you know, I realize there's a lot of you that are the salt of the earth and you're doing things that nobody knows about. Nobody knows about. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Just be the salt. You don't have to broadcast it. People don't have to know. You just do it. Just do what God's called us to do. And we do that out of here, outside, and we do it as a group. We do it as a group. Because we need to make a difference. And if we don't, there's nobody to do it. 
I think we're it. Now, when I say we're it, I'm talking about the church everywhere, not New Hope Church. It's God's people everywhere being the salt. I believe, I believe in some ways we're where we're at in our society and in our country because God's people haven't been salty. We haven't been salty. I believe in some ways we've taken on the ways of the world in some things. I believe in some things the world has influenced us more than we've influenced them. I think it's never too late to change. I think it's never too late to say, you know what, I want to be salt. Because that's what God expects of me. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can be salt. Lord, we thank you that you expect us to be salt. So Lord, help us to look for ways, look for times when we can be salt in the earth around us. Lord, help us to make a difference. Help us to make a difference to the people and, and places where we go. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Lord, just encourage us. Encourage us, Lord, to, to, to see you as you see us, the salt of the earth. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray if anyone has a need for prayer this morning, any personal needs, anything you'd like prayer for, that you'd encourage them to come up and, and let our prayer team pray for them up front as I dismiss. Lord, we just thank you for that. We just uh, thank you for being with us. Dismiss us now with your blessing. We just pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.